Hi, I'd like to do a video uh, tutorial. I'm going to break it into three parts. Uh, part one is uh, the first one uh, called How to Analyze the Milo Slick Live Histogram and Input Levels Tool. Now, I, I received several requests about how and what the Histogram and Levels Tool does, how it works. Uh, by email and some people asked me on the Melicam Yahoo group so I thought I would do these tutorials the best that I could. Now I want to talk first about the histogram and you may, might be wondering what is a histogram? Well basically a histogram is a bar graph that shows relative number of pixels at each brightness value. The greater number of pixels at a given brightness level the higher the peak will be. Linear and nonlinear changes will affect your histogram. And I'll get more into that after. But what I'd like to say is here is your histogram. And if you look in this region here, when I put my mouse on the luminance area of the histogram, you can see why at 55 pixel 1519. That means the Y column, number 58, has 1,519 effective pixels. The higher the peak, you can see right here, right there, they draw, jump up to 1,668. On the side, the left vertical side of the histogram, it's usually written here, the percentage of effective pixels. So that is the percentage. On the base, the horizontal area here at the base of the histogram, between 0 and 255, this is the shades of gray. We're looking at from 0, because this is 8-bit, 0 to 255, there are 256 shades of gray. And it would start here with the darkest shades of gray, very black, black shades of gray, going into mid shades of gray, and then starting to go into a lighter shades of gray, and almost white, light whitish gray. Okay, so this is the black point, and this is the mid point, or the gamma, and this is the white point. If you lower the white point, too much you saturate the stars and the brighter regions of the um, object so anything from 180 to 255 will become saturated pretty well basically useless not existent it'll be all white okay that's why it blows out same thing on the black point. If you raise the black point and go, say, at 235, I mean 35, sorry, anything from 0 to 35 will be all black. And that would be pretty well cutting off everything, losing all this data here. Now, I'll break down the histogram of how to read it after, but this is known as clipping the data. When you go beyond the peak, the start of the peak, you are clipping the data. Same thing with the white point. Here is the end of your histogram. If you go beyond it, right there, you're starting to clip it. Okay, so we'll reset that and leave it at that. Now the midpoint, uh, the beauty about the midpoint is it acts almost like a curves tool. It's not as advanced as a curves tool, but it serves the purpose for our needs for near live observations. Um, basically, the um, if it, uh, gamma, 50% of the effective pixels are on the left side of the midpoint of the gamma slider, and 50% are on the right point of the gamma slider. Now, because you're not cutting off any data, you're just expanding or contracting. It is known as uh, non-linear. You're not making permanent changes, you're not doing any uh, permanent damage, losing data or anything. 
so you can use this without any worry within reason okay now when you raise your black point to there that's a different story or your white point if you lower your white point that's a different story by moving the black and white point you're making linear adjustments if you're cutting off the data beyond the uh, points from here to here you lost all that data and from there to there you lost all the data especially if you save the image like this and try to do a little post processing later you've lost all this data here and here so you got to be careful not to clip the data okay so I'll reset that now if I was to raise this say to 30 and lower the white point say to 252 that would be a total of 33 pixels that we uh, removed so instead of working with 256 shades of gray we're now between here and here at 223 shades of gray okay so that's how you uh, determine the shades the more you go towards the right with the black point or towards the left with the white point you are now at less shades of gray and you can see the object what happens okay and i'm just going to reset that now when we're looking at the image here the image is made up of certain zones um, uh, certain zones there's four zones uh, you're looking at the dark zone first the dark zone is the darkest regions of your image right in this area the dark zones have the poorest signal to noise ratio and therefore it has the most noise it's quite noisy so you have to watch when you're moving your gamma point just lowering it to brightness that you don't start showing the noise that's when you have to raise your black point just in front to prevent that so that's the dark zone the next is the dim zone this is the dim areas the regions in the sky background that have some very faint nebulosity or maybe arms of a galaxy that are very faint and you don't want to raise your black point I'm always watching NSN and I see people saying oh they like their background nice jet black and uh, they clip the data and that's not a good thing because when you clip your data like for example there look what happens yeah you do have a separation of contrast increases but you've lost all that important data here okay by clipping the black point so you don't want to do that so that is your mid um, or your dim zone the dim zone also has a very poor signal to noise ratio and that is why it is good even for observing sometimes to stack a few that way you get a better signal to noise ratio and you can stretch the data and have it less noisy uh, the other zone is your middle zone which is this region right about here that's your middle zone and uh, that's a bit better signal to noise uh, it's not as faint the, the, the uh, nebulosity and uh, you can raise I mean uh, lower the gamma point and show more detail again stacking definitely improves the signal too the detail with less noise the brighter zone is ar around here and up around here this is the brighter zones right here and that's the best signal to noise ratio and it gives you um, a lot of deep data where you can lower your gamma point and really show it nicely so that just gives you that idea now if you look here you have your luminance basically your y or your luminance is an average of the red green and blue channels that's why you can only adjust either your luminance 
or your color balance, your RGB, and I'll show that in probably the third video, how to use the histogram uh, and the levels tool. So basically, you have your luminance, and then you have your red, green, and blue. Okay, so I'll reset that. Now, one final note I want to talk about is, and this is important, is your histogram, how to read this peak. And this is probably one of the most important parts of this tutorial. Uh, the other parts that were important was how to adjust your pointers, the black, gamma, and white. Anyways, from here, from zero, to the start of this peak, maybe just a tiny bit before, right about here, is your readout noise. Basically, readout noise uh, is pixels that not are non-effective, uh, okay, and it causes noise. Also, gradient caused by um, the moon or a bright street light nearby can cause a uneven um, background or a gradient or a bright area of the background which is a gradient and also sky glow so basically from zero till about here is your readout noise or your gradient or your uh, sky glow from here to about here so from here of the histogram to about there that is your sky background all the background in the sky and uh, the sky background is never black it's always got gray and it brightness in it light pollution etc so that is your sky background now basically from here to here right around from here to here that is your sky background and your target either your nebula galaxy so from here again down to here that is your sky target now in this area from here down to here not a large area right about from year to year that is your actual target uh, all these pixels are all in your object of interest for example m16 so again from here where the peak ends right there there's a drop here right to here now from here to here that is your target part of your target and stars okay so from here to here all these dim stars are all in here from here to here along here that is your stars in the, uh, in the um, field of view that are that's your stars so again from here to here now if you're looking at the, these real bright bright stars uh, around here maybe in this region to to this brighter area that's this peak right here okay so that gives you a good idea of how to read the histogram which is very important and uh, will lead into the part two segment of how to expose your images properly um, when observing so I want to thank you very much for watching this tutorial I hope it helped a lot and it's very important to watch all three I'm gonna do three so this is part one and then we'll go into part two okay thanks again clear skies and happy near real-time viewing to all